Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 6L, where we're going to consider a few of the many ethical and social issues that personal genomics raises. We'll particularly focus on the issues that are directly relevant to the person who's having the analysis done. What difference it will make to you, to your family, how will you interpret it, what to do if it's bad news or if it's good news, and how widely do you want to make this available. First, you might think, what difference will this information make to me? And I like this graphic that I got from a blog um, of how we can partition the kinds of information we could get. There's bad stuff, bad things you don't know about. There's bad things you do know about. For most people, it's better to know about the bad things than to not know, but other people may feel differently about that. Um, again, there's the good things you do know about, and almost everybody wants to find out about good things they didn't already know about. But these are very personal preferences, and you have to decide for yourself what kind of a person you are and whether you really would like to find out both the good and bad news. What if you find something important? If you really want to understand your results, how are you going to do this? Of course, taking this course is a great way to start, but what if the results are complex and what if they're important to you? What if you find something important? Are there people that you can ask? Do you have access to good genetics counselors? Um, what if it's bad news? Well, Genetic counselors worry a lot about the consequences of, of giving patients bad news. But in fact, most studies have found that in the long run, people who receive bad medical news cope well, and in general, they're glad to know about this bad news. But people differ, and again, this is something you'll have to decide for yourself. If, especially if you have a particular health issue or family issue that you're concerned about, you really should think in advance about what you will do if the news is bad. If it's a health thing, are there treatments that can be given? Are there precautions you can take? Or is it simply that it would allow you to better plan? Of course, there's also um, an often unexpected kind of bad news called misattributed paternity. And this is what happens when a person who has genetic testing done discovers that one of their parents, usually their father, the person they've always thought of their father, is not their true father. Uh, a lot of numbers are thrown around about how common this is. And the good news is that in settled, socially stable societies, misattributed paternity is quite rare. But in societies that have been disrupted, for example, by civil strife or by war, misattributed paternity can be quite common, and it can be a very bad news surprise if you receive that. What if it's good news? Well, it could be that you don't have a mutation that you thought you might have. That would be wonderful. It could be that your genotype gives you a lower risk of something you've been quite worried about. And that's, that's the really good news. Um, if you do SNP typing, well, you'll almost certainly get a mix. A bit of good news, you're at low risk of all of these things. A bit of bad news, you're at high risk of some other things. Usually not very good, very high risk or very low risk compared to the average. Usually it's, you know, less than double the risk. And often the risk is for things that are not very common anyway. Lots of the information you get will be quite boring. Oh, I'm not very much at risk of things I'd never heard of and wasn't worried about anyway. And I have a slightly higher risk of other things I've never heard of and wasn't worried about anyway because they're quite uncommon. And for most things, well, we just don't know. So most of it is pretty neutral news. One very important issue to think about before you undertake any personal genomic analysis is how this information is going to affect other members of your family. And that's because if you have family, then your genetic information is going to reveal information about them. 
every allele that you have, you got from one of your parents. So that means that your parents have the alleles that you have. Every allele that you have is, that's homozygous must be present in both of your parents and will definitely be present in all of your children. If you're heterozygous for it, it'll be present in half your children. Do your family members want this information? Do they know that you're obtaining this information? Do you plan to share it with them? If not, how bad are you going to feel about keeping it secret? This all needs to be thought of before you have the analysis done. Who are you going to share the information with? Um, not just members of your immediate family, but do you want to make it available to other people? Do you want to make it available to your physician? Does your physician have the background to understand modern genome information? Most physicians don't. Um, do you want to make this information available to distant relatives? Do you want to use this information to find distant relatives and make contact with them? Will you share your genotype with them? What about researchers? Do you want to give medical researchers, genetic researchers, access to your genetic information. There's a movement to do this. Some people, including me, are making their genomes public because they think it might be useful for genetic research. Because we're, until now, even now, the number of genomes that are publicly available is quite small, and this limits the kinds of research that can be done. Um, usually when you make it available to researchers, you're also making it available to the whole world. There are public databases full of, for instance, SNP information and public databases of genome sequence information as well. Who don't you want to share this information with? Are there ways that the inf information about your genome could be used in ways that could harm you? Um, might employers use it? Um, to assign you to particular jobs or prevent you from taking on particular jobs that they thought were relatively unsuitable or high risk for a person of your genotype. Might life insurance companies misuse this information and deny you life insurance? Could you be denied health insurance? Until recently, this was a big concern in the United States. Um, legally, it's not allowed, but there's concerns that it still can happen. Might others want to get your information badly enough that they would try to get it illegally? Um, this, I think, is not a concern for most people, but there might be particular people, particularly, say, celebrities, who would be at risk for this. So this is something else to worry about. Um, one other issue is, well, is this even legal to do this, to get your own genetic information? Most people, including me, feel that we all should have the right to know our genetic information. It's, it's our birthright in a sense. But in some places, genetic counselors have successfully campaigned to have this information available only through medical professionals because they're concerned about harmful consequences of people using this information in ways that they don't have the education or training to understand. Perhaps people rushing into um, health medical procedures or taking complicated precautions they don't need. So there are reasonably convincing arguments to be made about this. For example, in New York State, it's illegal to have your genome analyzed by 23andMe or other providers. You have to actually leave the state to get this done. Same in Maryland. These are supposed to protect consumers, and it's up to you to decide how you feel about this. So the most important thing is to remember that your genotype isn't your destiny. Um, the odds, they're just odds. It's, a, it's all probabilistic. There may be, there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of variation, even possible that the tissues that were tested had different variants. You have the prints and that your saliva may not be an accurate representation of your whole genome, although that's not usually the case. So what we've done, we've contrasted some of the 
the good points and the bad points about personal genomics. And in this lecture, I've tried to emphasize a little bit more the concerns and less the cool things that you can learn because they're the issues that you really need to pay attention to before you have it done. Now, coming up next, we're going to shift gears away from thinking about people and think about the personal genomics of our pets and of livestock. And then in the next lecture, we're going to extend this to thinking about ecology as well. I hope to see you there.